Hi, this is Bill. I'm a chemistry tutor, um, experienced at the college level and the high school level. Um, and this particular video um, is going to be about a 10-minute lecture talking about something called the 5% rule, uh, which we uh, want to do is uh, the 5% rule is we're using equilibrium um, constants and their calculations um, in a way that eliminates the use of the quadratic equation, which can lengthen the process and give you, uh, leave you open to making mistakes. Uh, we want to simplify this as much as possible because what we want to do is, or, you know, our bottom line is to get your grade up and get your grade up to the highest levels that you can because when you, uh, when you score high grades in things like chemistry and uh, math, all of the sciences, that opens doors to uh, more career opportunities that you can pursue, which you may not even be aware of yet. Um, so anyway, the 5% rule, again, is, is a, we're using a simple prop uh, compound, vinegar in this particular case, acetic acid. Um, and we're going to just show you the concept. Um, quite often when I work with students, that uh, they get into these chapters of, of dealing with ionization constants and, and um, equilibrium constants. Um, they sort of get it, but in, you know they don't know when to when not to use the quadratic formula. You know they use false um, reasonings to uh, to not use them. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not. But what we'll try to do is we'll try to keep this short. So um, what we have here is this is the five percent rule. Uh, we're saying when to use the quadratic. Okay, and we do not want to use the quadratic in this case. Um, using Kc, K sub C, that's the equilibrium constant, where K is basically a formula that involves the ratio of the products of the reactants. So if we look at this, this uh, 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 equation here, this is our vinegar, uh, acetic acid, um, CH3COOH, and it's an equilibrium with the acetate ion, all right, which is this guy, and a proton which is, again, everything is aqueous. And so what we have is uh, this is our products and this is our reactant, all right? So this ratio of products to reactants uh, includes um, some um, dealing with some uh, issues with regards to th these coefficients become exponents, but we don't have to worry about that in this case because everything is one. You know, we have one of these gives us one of these and one of those, or one mole of this gives us one mole of this and one mole of that. And so what we're really looking at is this, just these two X's here, all right, uh, as our products, okay? So here, here's our initial concentration of acetic acid. It's a half a molar, okay, 0 0.5, all right? And it, initially there is no acetate ion and there is no proton. All right, the C stands for change. So since we don't know what the change is, but we do know the expression or the equilibrium constant so we can calculate it, all right, we're going to lose an amount of this, but whatever we lose in this, it's going to become this in equal amounts. Okay, so whatever this amount is, this amount here uh, will be created in um, the acetate ion form, and this amount will be created as a proton. Again, the concentration of the protons is actually going to give us our pH, um, but th that's a story for another issue because sometimes pH has competing forces, but we're not going to deal with that right now. We want to just justify the lack of using the, uh, um, the quadratic formula. So the five rule, say, down here, this is an assumption category here. We're going to assume that this little x here, okay, on this paper, this... Um, at, at equilibrium, the 0.5 minus x, uh, that would be here. This 0.5 minus x, this x is so small, this is our assumption, is that it, we're, we're, it's actually, uh, we're, we're going to assume it's zero, okay? And one of the reasons is, uh, is we're, we're looking at this, this is our initial concentration here. We're saying that if this is so small, that even after this occurs, this 
takes away from that, all right, that we're going to still wind up with this. This is going to become part of our calculation. And you'll see that right down here. This is the 5% rule assumption. So here's, here's the uh, equilibrium constant. If for in this case for acetic acid or vinegar, it's it's 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And it's x times x divided by 0. 0.5. This is the x times x, all right? And so x times x is x squared, and it's divided by 0. 0.5. And if we solve that equation, we wind up with x equals 0. 0.003. That's not a percent, that's a number, okay? So um, in this case here, if x is 0. 0.3, uh, we can actually uh, come up with a number, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, if we take 0 0.003 and subtract it from 0 0.500, all right, which is what we're saying here, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.003, we wind up with 0 0.497. Now, the interesting thing here is 0.497 uh, it's three significant figures. If it's if we you look at this as two significant figures, it's actually 0.5. So they're the same. So I mean, we're we're starting to drive towards the conclusion that our assumption is correct. That we don't really need to have a real value here. We can just say that it starts at 0.5 and it ends at 0.5. Okay, even though it loses a little smidge of of x. Now the question then is, okay, since we've calculated this this thing to be zero, um, then our x calculates out to be 0 0.0003. And we want to know is 0 0.003 less than 5% of this number, the original number that we started with. So here is we're saying since 0 0.003, the ratio, of this over this, this is uh, our calculated x, assuming uh, assuming the, the amount taken away, this x is going to be zero. We're calculating these x's, all right? This over that times 100. Now we're going from this back to a percentage, all right? And that's why we need times 100 in here to give that number. And so this turns out to be 0.6%, uh, which is a lot, much less than 5%. All right, so 0.6%, this passes the test, all right? And so we can go forward and, and calculate our, uh, our, uh, our values, all right? But I'm going to give some cautions here, okay? There can be extenuating circumstances, certain conditions, i.e. extreme uh, KC values, extreme initial values. You know, if, if this number, if, if our, uh, let's take a look at our uh, equilibrium constant, if the equilibrium constant for this particular reaction wasn't vinegar, it was something else, and it was 10 to the minus 14 or 15, we would wind up with some kind of extraneous uh, solutions, and they would be they would be non-valid, or they would be simply incorrect. And the reason for that is is because we have a competing force working in the background. Because this number is so small, the Kw for water, okay, water can act as an acid can also act as a base, all right? So in just, in just water is, is the, the Kw for water is 10 to the minus 14. So if we're dealing with a, a K sub C of 10 to the minus 13 or 14, eh, you know, we can calculate an X, but it's going to have this confounding our answer, and we could wind up with the wrong answer. Does this happen on a regular basis? No, okay? Here, here's, here's the deal. All right, our, 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 our issue here is, is to save time and try to get the right answer. Um, a, 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 some of these types of problems can be very hard, and they can, you can spend hours on them, all right? Uh, it's not uncommon to take a home a, a work problem and, and spend, you know, a couple of hours on it. Uh, get together with some friends and, or even have a tutor help you with it. You know, either way, you know, some of these things can be very complicated. Um, can something that complicated be on a test? Unlikely, all right? Uh, you know, a, a good uh, professor or teacher is going to, uh, you know, need to get a whole classroom in and out in, a, in an hour's time, and he's not going to bug you down with a problem that's going to take, you know, an hour or two to, to, to solve and ch double check and all the rest. It's probably going to be multiple choices, too. So, you know, is it likely that you're going to see, you, you, you'll see something like this on a test, all right? 
Okay, in this case here, I was talking back here. Sorry, I moved up the paper here. All right, um, this was the 0.5 minus the 0.3, which is the 0.497, which is equal to 50. Let's see if I can get my picture back here. All right. And let's see, how do we move this thing out of the way here? Okay, it's going to go away on its own, I guess. And so down here is the, um, this is the KW for water. Water is in equilibrium with itself, you know, HOH. And uh, again, the KW for water is 10 to the minus 14th. So this can get perilously close to the K sub C. Uh, and, you know, we're going to have competing forces. And so, again, you, are you likely to see a problem like this on a test? No. Are you likely to see a problem like this on a test? Yes. Okay. But what do we need to know re really quickly? We want to know that X here, we're going to assume it's zero. We're going to calculate the X using these two X's. All right. And we're gonna, we want to know, all right, um, if the X that we calculate using these two, which is the one we're going to actually substitute in here, is going to be s less than 5% of this one. And that's where this particular calculation came in to be. All right. They're saying if X uh, over the original concentration is less than 5%, the assumption is valid. So in this case here, we used 0 0.003 because we calculated that here. All right. And we came up with, and we had just times 100. We went back from this, which is just a number, to this, which is a percent. And but that's why we needed to multiply 100. So we wound up with 0.6%. Uh, all right, which is much, much less than 5%. And the rule says that if this ratio here is less than or equal to 5%, the assumption is valid. There are circumstances where 5% is, is a little too generous as you get into uh, higher levels of chemistry. And, uh, um, you know, sometimes they want to narrow down the, uh, the, uh, the error and uh, th again, th this 5% is actually derived from statistics. It's 1 out of 20. And uh, it's considered by many statisticians to be good enough for most things. But when you're dealing with life and death things like biomedical uh, uh, chemicals and things that, you know, could kill you, um, th they demand a higher standard. So that what they want is something that, that's not 90% or 95%. They want something that's 99%. Uh, correct, you know, with a, a small error, but we don't have to worry about that now. Right now, the main thing here is that you understand now how to um, to determine whether or not you can get by with this simple calculation, this one here, which comes up with this. This will probably be your answer. Okay, what's the value for X? Okay, um, or what's the equilibrium concentration of this? So you would take this minus this, and, and the equilibrium concentration would be 4.497. And that's this minus this equals 0.497. That could be the answer to, the, to, to this particular kind of question. So, so much for that. Uh, good luck with everything. Um, uh, study this and practice these problems and go to harder problems. You'll understand it better. It's, uh, you know, the ice chart. In some cases, some students have a little difficulty. Again, this is initial. This is the change. This is at equilibrium. And this is just an assumption line, okay? This is saying these are the numbers I think I should be using uh, to calculate X. And I'm just going to use these two Xs and this as my original concentration, or actually at my equilibrium concentration is going to be the same, all right? And so uh, good luck. Hope everything is well, and I'll see you on the next one. Again, these are short 10-minute uh, lectures uh, that will hopefully kickstart your, your chemistry program and career. Um, see you guys on the next trip. Thanks. Bye-bye.